Lee with Larry Kruger keeps rolling on KNBR, the sports leader. And welcome back to Niners Nightly. And uh, we continue our conversation with Josh Dubow, who covers the 49ers for the AP, does an incredible job. And he's with us on the UMA guest line to talk a little bit about the Niners. Hey, Josh, how are you? Good. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing well. And, you know, you put out a tweet about uh, the 49ers uh, third down defense. And um, <laughs> it, it is not good. And and not only are they struggling, they're struggling on third and long, third on third and seven plus. And I think, you know, I don't have it in front of me. It was like 72, 73 percent. And the rest of the league's at 20 percent, 22 percent. What do you? What do you think the issue is with the third down defense? Is it do you look at it as a problem up front with the rush, or is it um, a back end issue? Well, you know, it's two games, so you you know, it's you know, it's, I think it's eleven or nine. So yeah, it's not not a whole lot of opportunity. So you don't want necessarily make too much of it after after two games. But um, I do think that the pass rush, I mean, you know, I think it was a little bit on both. I think the pass rush has not been what the Niners have been used to. I think you know, I think the interior pass rush. To me, has not been at the level that, that they would hope, um, and you know, uh, you know, like, of course, Matos had you know had a good pass, you know, had a couple good ones uh, against the Vikings, but you know, and, you know, Leonard Floyd, you know, I think he's a solid pass rusher. He's not the guy; he's he's more of a cleanup sack guy, you know, where the other guys are getting the pressure and there he is with his effort getting it, as opposed to the guy causing it. And I do think they missed. Uh, who fuck on the back? I, I think getting him back this week could help us. You know, when he gets back to the main, you know, he's a he's level. a good. The thing about Hufanga is a good communicator. Yes. Um, and it seems like and, they and make he, fewer mistakes. Great anticipation. His, his, his anticipation skills are really good too. He, you know, he's not the fastest guy, but he, but he really anticipates where the ball's going. Um, and yeah, he keeps everything, everyone in line back there. Um, I think they, I think they've really missed him. I think the defense last year took a pretty big drop off when he got hurt. So getting him back. Um, and that was with Gibson playing, who's I think a probably a better every down safety than, uh, you know, than George Odom, who's more of a special teams guy. So I think getting, getting Hufunga back in there is going to be a big help. It's very interesting. The 49ers um, were not in the mood today to be kind of real and acknowledge the faults of their players. Um, it was much more like, no, we love it. Um, you know, Nick Sorensen was asked about Collins and Hargrave. Collins and Hargrave didn't do anything in this last game that I saw. No. I mean, you could have parked a, I could have parked my Chevy Tahoe between Sam Darnold and the Niners' defensive interior. And yet, when um, when you know, when Sorensen was asked about his his interiors, oh, love those guys, love those guys. Well, Collins, yeah, I thought Collins. I was surprised how good he was in the first. You know, he yeah, he was great the against first, the Jets. Yeah. Against the Jets, and you know, I saw him close. You know, close when he was with the Raiders that year, when John Gruden called him the key to the defense, and he finished the year with no sacks, no tackles for loss, no takeaways, no forced fumbles, no anything. Um, and the Raiders had one of the worst defenses in the league, so maybe he was the key. Um, so I was kind of surprised how, how well he played in Week One. Um, but I think Hargrave just hasn't he hasn't performed to the level that I think that, that they expected when they paid him all that money. Um, you know, he, they expected him to be a difference maker at defensive tackle. I just don't think he's been that for them. No. No, I mean, and, and and in fact, I mean, it was a two, it was almost like a double loss because not only did they spend a ton of money to get Hargrave, but they also got rid of Aziz Al-Shair, Hassan Ridgeway, Samson Ebukam, Jimmy Ward, Emmanuel Mosley. They got rid of some of the heart and soul of their of their run D. They well, added this and, great and pass and rusher. And then Armstead this year. You know, they couldn't, you know, because they're paying Hargrave, they didn't keep Armstead this year. And right. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely a, a guy who, when he was healthy, did create, you know, havoc coming from defense and those passing situations on those third down situations as a rusher from the inside. So yeah, no, that it definitely, you know, they're they're paying they're paying Hargrave a lot of money to be a difference maker, and you know he needs to he needs to do that. The other thing, you know, I asked Brock about, you know, his receivers not getting separation. Of course, you know, he the last thing a, re- a quarterback's going to do is throw right. his receivers under the bus. And I wasn't trying to get him to throw his receivers under the bus, but but it's it's glaring. Through two weeks, the 49er offense averages the lowest target separation in the NFL, worse than the Carolina Panthers. Why do you think that is? Is that I mean, is it just Ayuk's rusty and they don't have a ton of speed? I mean, what do you make of that stat that they just they're not creating separation and it's 
It's putting an awful lot of pressure on Purdy to throw strikes down the field. Yeah, and to go along with that, you know, they've always been top of the league in yards after catch. They're last in the league in yards after catch this year because they're not – and that, I think that goes hand-to-hand with the separation and not having, you know, room to run after you catch the ball. Um, and, you know, yeah, I think the attention that he – you know, obviously he creates separation himself, the attention he draws – um, and you know, I think Ayuk is probably not quite back to where he was. And, and I think there were a couple plays. The separation stats are always a little wonky because you know, it's at, by target, and there were a couple plays where I think Ayuk did create separation and wasn't throwing the ball. So those don't, you know, those don't count. So that's that. You know, it's a little bit. You know, it's not always you know the most you know accurate in terms of telling what's going on because because I think it's by target, not by not by route. Um, so. Um, but yeah, no, I think Ayuk is, you know, definitely a little bit of rust from not having training camp and, you know, that often, it's just not the same without McCaffrey. Um, he's such a, he's just such a big part of the passing offense, you know, Nathan's been great running the ball, but he's not, he's not the threat in the passing game that McCaffrey is. No, I mean that, and that has that. I'm sure that has a lot to do with why the Niners went two for ten on third downs. They didn't have right. CMC. Yeah. He's almost like a magic, a magic uh, guy on third down. What would you say is the biggest concern outside of injuries? I mean, obviously, so they've they've got a lot of injuries right now, so that's a primary. But outside of the injuries, what would you say is is your biggest concern about the team after two games? I'm saying pass rush. Yeah, you know, I think that pass rush needs the defense to play at the level they want. The pass rush needs to be better. Um, yeah, I think Kufunga coming back is going to help the secondary. I think the offense is, you know, there are issues on the offensive line, sure, but I think the offense, when everyone's healthy, if, you know, if everyone gets healthy, the offense is going to be fine. Um, but I think the pass rush, I'm not sure they have the guys to have the pass rush that they've had in the past. You know, it's, it's a it's a hell of a it's a you know it's it's scary to think about, it, but you're probably right. Uh, in Week One against the Giants, Sam Darnold was pressured on 42% of his dropbacks. The Niners only generated 12 pressures on 31 dropbacks, so 39%, so a little bit less than the Giants did. Minnesota's O-line in that week one was 24th in pass block win rate, and they really didn't get a lot of heat on Darnold. Um, and I would imagine... And the weekend, getting, the weekend you know, of that line, yeah, those tackles are good in Minnesota, but the, but the interior guys are not. Like, that's where right. the Niners' interior guys should have been able to create, you know. You know, the Vikings do have... You know, up there is one of the best tackle pairs in the league with those two, with O'Neill and Darisaw. But the interior is definitely the weakness, and the Niners weren't able to exploit that at all. No, no. How surprised were you that Leonard Floyd was so good in Week One and so kind of unimpactful, if you want to call it that, in Week Two? I was probably a little more surprised about the Week One, how good he was. You know, really. To me, he's a guy. Yeah, like. You know, he does some good thing, but you know, I don't know. I looked at him as a guy who, you know, he's obviously incredibly durable, and I think he, you know, does a nice job setting edge, doing things like that. But as a pass rusher, I think he's much. I know he's had gotten the sack numbers, but I think a lot of that is based on what other guys. His pressure numbers have, I don't think about, has been at the level that his sack numbers have been, and I think his sacks have, all, have often been a reflection of like other guys doing the work in, in him just with great effort, getting clean up stuff and things like that. I don't, I just don't think he's a difference maker as a pass rusher. Um, you know, I think he, it's more, you know, I think, I think he does help in the run game. And I think, uh, you know, if, if, if you're getting the interior pressure and you're getting Bosa pressure, then I think that Floyd's going to get his, his sacks are going to come his way. But, um, you know, I'm just not, I'm, I was not sure if he's the one who's going to create it by himself. Uh, what do you think of Purdy so far? I mean, he's he's leading the league in in um, you know total yards passing through two games, but I did feel like he held the ball a little bit too long. I, I also think this last week was a lot more challenging a game for the quarterback than I think most people realize. Between you know the blit blitzing the quarterback seventy five eighty percent of the time, and then mixing in all kinds of exotics and you know five man six man pressures, and then alternating that with rushing three and four and dropping seven and eight and, you know, making him kind of find soft spots in the zone. I, I think this, the Viking game was a real challenge for, for Purdy, but that being said, what do you think of what you've seen of him this year? Yeah, he's been fine. You know, I think he's been, you know, for the most part, he hasn't made too many mistakes. He, you know, obviously he had the, you know, he had a lot of huge plays, but, um, you know, he had the drop ball, drop ball in the end zone. By you in, in the first game, which was a great throw. That was probably might, might have been one of his best throws of the year. Um, you know, he's been fine. You know, I do think the the Minnesota game 
definitely, you know, I think what Minnesota does, it just makes it so hard to run play action against them. And play action, such as, you know, I think a lot of their big stuff comes off the play action um, because, you know, I just don't think you want to, you know, when they're showing eight at the line and then dropping into cover two or showing or blitz, you know, when you don't know what they're going to do to turn your back on play action, it's probably not what the quarterback wants to do. So their play action rate was just unbelievably low um, so far this year. Um, you know, they're usually, you know, they, they've dropped over the years with, you know, they're not quite like the league leaders. I think they were early in Shanahan's time, but, you know, they still run it a lot and their play action numbers have definitely dropped in the first two games. And part of that is who they played. Um, so, you know, I think some of the big plays will come when they can start running more play action, but, um, yeah, I think he's been fine. Like, you know, I guess, you know, part of it is, you know, I didn't think he was one of the top three quarterbacks in the league last year. Right. You know, you know, you know the numbers show that. And so, you know, the numbers are obviously aren't nearly as good as they were last year, but I don't think, you know, but I think the numbers last year were better than he played. And my guess, and in some ways the numbers this year are probably not quite as good as he's played, but, you know, not getting yards after catch, not getting separation, you know, you know, not being able to use play action from the other thing. It's probably, you know, like his numbers are probably not as good as the way he's played. And last year his numbers were way better than the way he played. So, Hey, one last one before we let you go. We've buried the lead. The big story today was Kittle didn't practice with the hamstring. Mooney Ward did not practice. They listed as as a hamstring slash a knee. Um, okay, let's just assume that these guys can't go on Sunday. How challenged will the Niners be with their replacements? I guess Eric Saubert starts for Kittle. Um, who would who do you think starts for Mooney if he can't go? Um, you know, my guess is you go. Know, you know, in base you have Yadam and uh, and Diamond or Lenore, and then and then Bernardo Green is probably the guy who then comes in. You know, luckily this week the Rams don't have their receivers, so you're going up against Demarcus Robinson, Robertson and uh, Robinson and uh, Tyler Johnson, and not Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. So, um, you know, and then even if it's another week, you know, next week it's the, the Patriots who don't really have receivers either. So, um, if you're going to have to miss Mooney Ward for a week or two, this is probably not the worst time of the year for it to happen based on who they're playing. Um, but Kittle obviously is a much bigger deal for them, especially with, with McCaffrey and, and, and Debo already out. You know, that's definitely with Amper what they can do offensively. No question. Yeah. Kittle, Kittle's unique in that. And we talked about this, this was Kittle's a guy that's almost irreplaceable because they just don't have the depth behind him. Um, and you know, it will be interesting to see if they have to go Sunday without Kittle, Josh, great stuff, man. Always love uh, seeing you down in Santa Clara. We'll, we'll do it again. And I appreciate you stopping by on KMBR. Yeah, today. no problem. Josh Dubow uh, from the AP does an incredible job covering the 49ers. And if you're reading stories that are written from the AP, Oftentimes are written uh, by Josh. All right, we'll take a final time out.